guys, it's Britt. We are here at Islands of Adventure today to try out the new roller coaster. So Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure has been open for a whole whopping two days. This is day two. So it might be crazy, but we're here to get on it first thing in the morning. Let's head on in and ride the roller coaster. This is the crowd waiting to get in an hour before park opening. Currently, they're only letting in 10 people at a time, so this is gonna take a while. The line for Hagrid's is starting all the way back by Hulk. Currently, they're saying it's not operational, but I have a feeling that's just a scare tactic. I don't know, I don't trust them. And already they have the vendor set up for the people in line. And we're making our way into Seuss Landing. So we're on hour one of waiting. The ride is still not working and we're waiting over here in the Poseidon's Fury line. So one hour down, hopefully not another nine to go. Now they have us walking through the old Sinbad theater. This is actually kind of cool because this show has been closed for a while. So it's kind of interesting to see what happened to this place. We're on hour two now of waiting. Supposedly in another hour, the ride will actually open. And then maybe another hour of waiting after that. We're in the old Sunbad Theater right now. They played us some music, they're giving us some free water. Got an Uno game going on, so right now, it's not too bad. After waiting two hours in Sinbad, they brought us back outside, and it looks like they're bringing out some characters to keep us entertained. That's kind of cool. I like that. We're getting to Hogsmeade, we're getting there. Progression people, progression. We're only almost three hours in. I see you Hogwarts, I see you. We are officially in Hagrid's line. People, this is not a drill. We can actually see the roller coaster. Hope is in sight. We are almost there. Can I just say how awesome this roller coaster looks? Oh, look, there it goes, all the way in the back. Finally, um, this ride looks really, really cool. And the one thing I love about it is that it's a traditional roller coaster and not that virtual reality stuff Universal's really big into doing. I'm really glad they went the classic route this time. We're at the hut. Fun fact, you can see Hagrid's hut in both this queue line and the line for Flight of the Hippogriff. So... Two rides, two different perspectives on his home. Butterbeer while waiting. Delicious. Hour four. I'm aiming for a half hour, 45 minutes more. So we're getting there. Getting there. Bypassed by the single riders line, but I refuse to take it. I'm going to suffer it out with everybody else. Yeah. Never mind. It's another delay. So we're almost inside for the pre-show video. It looks like it's going to rain, so hopefully we get in before it rains. minutes later my mission was finally accomplished I finally got to ride Hagrid's magical creature motor bike adventure I don't know I'm just gonna call it Hagrid's from now on I am going to be honest that was the 
by far the best ride in the park. Oh my God, that ride was utterly incredible and you need to get on it immediately. Was it eight hours and 20 minutes? Fantastic. Absolutely not, but it is utterly fantastic. And if I could go on that ride again right now, I totally would, despite the fact I haven't eaten or gone to the bathroom since five o'clock this morning. But I love that ride. So for the first three hours, the ride was not working at all. I guess the ride had been running since one o'clock in the morning because they were trying to get all the guests that were online yesterday on the ride. So they didn't have time for maintenance. So they spent the first three hours of the day doing maintenance. At around 11, they finally said, we're gonna let you into the queue for Hagrid's. And so we waited there. And they, we were told from there, it was gonna be about an hour wait. And that did not happen. <laughs> that did not happen at all. So the ride kept breaking down. There was some weather issues. The ride still kept breaking down. Like it was insane how many times that ride broke down. So my biggest recommendation for you is do not go on this ride anytime soon. Uh, wait. Wait for them to get the kinks out of this ride because I don't think they're running to full capacity. For Hagrid's, you need to be 48 inches to ride and you have two options. You can either sit in the motorbike or you can sit in the passenger sidecar. I, of course, had to take the motorbike because I'm, I'm not sitting in the sidecar. You do little twists and turns like a normal roller coaster. It does speed up at times because it's a motorcycle, so it has that like jerky reaction of speeding up. So that's pretty cool. And then you run into an animatronic Hagrid and an animatronic glass ended Scroot and you get to encounter them. And then you go past them and you go underwater and there's more twists and turns. And then all of a sudden you run out of track. So you go backwards for 30 to 45 seconds. And you go backwards into the Forbidden Forest so you can't see where you're going and it's all dark and there's a centaur and there's so many different animals. And then finally, the, the ground underneath you just completely disappears so you just drop and it's so cool. And then of course it ends and you see the, the unicorn with its baby and it's, it's cute. And, I want to go on it. I just want to go on it again, but it's close for capacity, so I can't. It is so freaking cool. Like it is, it is, it's amazing. It's by far the best, best Potter ride of them all, and I love Green Gods. I think Green Gods is fantastic, but this is beyond that. This is the best ride in the park. It is utterly incredible. So I'm really, really happy I got to ride it. Oh man, it was, it was, it was good. It's t-shirt worthy good. Dinner at Mythos. Mythos is in the Lost Continent part of the park across from Poseidon's Fury. This is always my go-to restaurant in Islands of Adventure, and I only waited two minutes to get in, and it's five o'clock in the afternoon, so that's nice. <laughs> Even the butter says universal. Here is the tomato soup. It smells delicious. Very tomatoey. And some pad thai, which I've never had in my life, so this is kind of exciting. And as you can see, it's pretty affordable as well. It's only about $15 more to eat here than it would be to be at a sit-down location, so overall, that's pretty good for a theme park. I just finished up dinner at Mythos and it was pretty good. But the tomato soup was good. It was a standard tomato soup. You know, pretty solid. It was there. The bread was good when you dip in it. Absolutely delicious. And the butter was good too. And then the pad thai noodles. I've never had pad thai noodles before, so I don't have anything to compare to. But it was pretty tasty. I enjoyed it. I felt like it was a good way to get vegetables in on a theme park meal. To be perfectly honest, Mythos is probably one of the best restaurants on Universal property. It is absolutely delicious, and really, I think it's the only restaurant of really significant quality. Um, the atmosphere is absolutely wonderful in there. It's very quiet, it's very chill. I got here around five o'clock, and I waited two minutes for table, so it was absolutely wonderful. I will say it is a little chilly in there, so bring a jacket if you get cold easily, but overall, Mythos is a wonderful meal. And I'm gonna be honest, Although all I did today was wait in line and eat dinner, I'm pretty tired. I'm actually very, very tired. My back hurts a little bit, my feet hurt, and it's funny because I only walked two miles. And typically speaking on a park day, I can walk anywhere up to like 15 miles. So the fact that I walked two miles and my feet are killing me, 
just shows how much work it takes to just stand in line as compared to walk around a theme park. Off to the Chocolate Emporium for dessert. The Chocolate Emporium is well known for their interesting milkshakes, so we'll see what they have. The Chocolate Emporium is a restaurant, but there's an itty bitty 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 little dessert place where you can just get dessert. So you go inside and you take a left. And I have the Heavenly Hazelnut Milkshake. Definitely a strong hazelnut flavor. It's very good. Very sweet and very big. I'm gonna like this. That milkshake was absolutely delicious and absolutely huge. It was definitely shareable. Um, if you don't share it, the milkshake will win. It's really, really sweet, so it's hard to finish it. And if you do finish it, you have a huge sugar rush and a stomach ache. So I do recommend sharing one of those milkshakes or the sundaes, because the sundaes are really big too. Um, there are very few tables if you're just getting dessert. So it can be a challenge to get a table, and it's a challenge to get a clean table. Every time I go there, there's always dirty plates left on that table. I was sitting at that table for at least 15 minutes before somebody asked if they could clean it. So keep that in mind. But overall, fantastic milkshakes. And I'm beyond stuffed. Overall, today was a good day. I don't feel it was at all productive, but today was a really good day. So I do have a couple of tips for surviving long lines while waiting for Hagrid's. Number one, don't wait eight and a half hours. It's a great ride, but it's not worth eight and a half hours. Number two, cross your fingers and hope the people in front of you and behind you are not annoying. If they are annoying, then it's gonna to be tough to make friends with them. But if they're great people, you can really have some good conversations. I had a ton of really fun conversations with the people that I was with, and I ended up riding with one of them. So it was really, really cool. It was definitely a different experience, and I love meeting new people, and so I got to be a part of their group for the day. Tip number three, get games. Uh, download games on your phone, and then bring cards for when your phone dies. Because if you're there for eight and a half hours, your phone will die. Number five, or are we on four? I think we're on four. Wear a cool shirt. I always wear my Harry Potter and the Cursed Child t-shirt, and I every single time I wear it to Universal, I get compliments on it. Or I have people that start conversations with me and ask me about it and what my opinion was. So the more if you can wear something that's different and that's cool, you can definitely meet some more friends that way because it strikes up a conversation right off the bat. And last but not least, when you're waiting in that long line, be optimistic. It's miserable to wait eight and a half hours. It is miserable. Like there's, there is no good thing about waiting that long for a ride, other than the ride itself. But it's, it's, not, it's not a fun process to wait that long. So you need to really keep a positive attitude because if you're gonna commit to waiting that long, you need to commit your attitude as well. And it worked out with my group. We were pretty good. We were pretty solid throughout most of the time. And even some of the team members were saying, you guys are really, really positive for being in the line this long. So keep at it. It's not easy to be happy when you're waiting eight and a half hours, but keep at it. What ride do you think I should hit up next in Islands of Adventure? Leave a comment down below. Or do you think I should try a new park? You can also find me as Brit's Tidbits on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for everybody who watched this video, and thank you for all my subscribers. This is Brit, ending today's chapter.